Really? Now, I want you guys to think about something for a second. Go to the slide. When I'm holding this, how many fingers should I be holding this with? All five. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be like a friend of mine, my nickname is Stubby, who doesn't like that nickname, if he doing four fingers. Yeah, he actually lost one in the army. But, very important. You're going to hold on to this, especially if you're going to battle. If you're going to fight someone, and you have a good grip on it. What's interesting is, in the Greek Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and inheritance of men. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as they come before you, we just want to lift up our hearts and minds unto you. Let us be receptive unto your word, and you give praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the one thing about it, people may be wondering, the Bible is a sword. It very clearly tells us that in Ephesians, when it talks about our armor of God, this is the only offensive item mentioning. If you're going to go on offense, you need the Word of God. When Satan tempted Jesus, he went out in the wilderness and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I'll tell you what, I had a hard time fasting 40 minutes. Okay? Doctors, like, before they did a couple of things, it's like, oh, you need to fast for 30 hours. Seriously? They're going to be dragging me in there. But the devil tempted me. And each of the three temptations, what did Jesus do? He quoted scripture at the devil. He fired back. Now, yes, I understand he's God incarnate. But at the time, he was fully human. He had set aside his divinity to be able to walk, to be able to breathe, to be able to eat, to be able to get tired, just like the rest of us. And tell you what, you're tired and hungry after 40 days in the wilderness of fasting. But he wanted to put himself in that place. All his life, keep in mind, he's 30 years of age at this time. He'd been trained up and raised just like any one of us. He went to Sabbath school. He went to the synagogue and worshipped. We know his father was a carpenter. And that just didn't mean that he put together doors and furniture and stuff. That also meant they went and they cut down the trees and they made their own lumber. So I guarantee you, Jesus had a few calluses and had some nice uh, muscular arms for the hard work. So he understood what it meant to be a, a manual laborer. To put in a good day's work and sweat. But he also knew. If you're going to fight the devil, if you're going to fight the world, if you're going to fight your own flesh, you need the Word of God. Now, what are our five fingers that we need to get a hold of this? The first one is hearing. So that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. Where is it mostly people hear the Word of God? Yeah, church, chapel services, maybe some audio books, Maybe the radio. But we need to hear the Word of God on a regular basis, right? All of us do. I myself, I need to listen. I need that also. Every person this side of heaven needs to be fed by hearing the Word of God. But hearing only gets us so far. I know all of you here are students. I've been a student since the age of five. Yes, I'm still taking classes. I'm still trying to learn. Guess what? The more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. But if I only went to class and listened to the teacher, to the professor, to the instructor, my learning, my ability to use that knowledge is going to be limited. Because I definitely, my three brain cells do not have photographic memory. I do not remember everything that I've heard over the years, everything I've seen. I need Google installed so I can find half the stuff I've learned over the years. 
and I talk about putting all these implants and all this cybernetic stuff, just install Google. If I could find half the stuff I forgot, that would be great. But we have to go beyond that. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of his prophecy keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, an interesting thing is, it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear. We see a difference in plural nouns, plural pronouns being used there. The Bible is basically saying for every one person that reads the word for themselves, there's a bunch of hearers. Now, I remember that back in school. You always had more people who would just listen to the teacher than those that actually cracked open the textbook. Okay? I learned this course. I had to crack open the textbook. I had to pay attention and take notes. I knew that. But if you count the amount of people, that are attending class versus being students, okay, there's a huge difference. There's a difference between just showing up and paying attention, between studying. That's where your next step gets in there. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This katana, as long as the other two swords that comes in the set, was a gift from a friend of mine named Azumi. He had came to me and said, Brian, I have a problem. Okay, what can I help you with? My right arm, because he's in the kingdom, looks like Arnold. My left arm still looks Japanese. So I took him down to the gym. I taught him powerlifting in exchange for him teaching me kingdom. Now, I'm sure this is because these are dull swords, they're not sharp, they're not the folded ones and everything. I'm sure it wasn't an expensive gift, but it meant something to me. The thing is, he had to study so he could get his body done. And likewise, I had to study or he was going to beat me senseless every week when we did kendo practice. Very first day, I picked up that kendo stick. It's like, this is bamboo. Why do we need body armor? He smacked me across the small of the back with probably about half his strength. When I got up off the floor, I was like, stupid question, I won't ask another, please hand me the body armor. I had a will there for like a month. That hurts, but I studied. Everything in life I've had to study for. Whether it's been in high school to graduate, whether it's been in college to graduate and get a degree, whether it's to be ordained, whether it's been in the army, I went to the chapter basic course, then to the career course, getting ready to go to another course end of October for two weeks. I have to do more than listen and read. I've got to study. My younger brother went off to Ohio Northern University. They grade the pharmacy program there on a bell curve. Now, some of you may not be familiar with bell curve. Bell curve means no matter how you score, the top 15% get A's and B's, bottom 15% get D's and S, and everybody else gets C's. He, I can't remember if it was a biology or chemistry class. He ended up with like a 93%. What type of grade do you think he would have got? Yeah, he got a D. Because that many people scored higher than that. So at age 18, for the first time in his life, unlike me, he has near photographic memory, so he's coded to through school, straight A's. He had to learn how to study at the age of 18. You know what? It's a lot easier the sooner you try to learn how to study than it is later. Myself, because of the way I get test anxiety, I have to take a day or two before a test and relax myself. Otherwise, my brain's like an edge and stitch. I go in there, I look at the test, and all of a sudden, Delete. Hey, who pressed the delete button? Everything's gone. Nope. Like when we was in the career course in 2017, we had to take the common core exam. Two days before that, we did Netflix and uh, weed. I mean, junk food, and I am not cracking open a single note or textbook. Nope. I am not going to stress myself out. 
but I knew myself. And I had studied up until that point. I was ready. But everything in life, we have to study. We have to practice. But we have to go beyond that. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, This book of the wall shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest serve to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The word meditate here doesn't mean you sit down on the floor, light a candle, um, no. I grew up near homes. My grandfather on my dad's side and my grandmother on my mom's side both have farms. There's a farm right next door to the place that my parents had. I've worked on three different farms growing up in addition to those. I am used to cows. Okay? Cows, it's an interesting thing, most people don't know this, they eat grass all day long. They put it in their stomach. But at the end of the day, you see them go over there and sit down and they're not eating, but they're chewing. What are they doing? That grass they ate came back up into their mouth, and they're now doing what's called chewing the cud. And they chew that grass again to get all the sweetness out of it, to make our milk. Well, their milk. We just happen to hijack it. But that's what's chewing the cud. Same word is used in the Bible here for meditate. After you've heard and study and read the Word of God, later you go over and over again in your mind. 